Hey kids, good to see you. Let's see, how can, I would love to give you a high five, but I'm not sure how we can do that on video. I don't want you hitting your TV screens or, or hitting the computer, but maybe we could just do an air high five. Ready? Cool, awesome. Oh, I feel good just imagining how we're doing that together. I was thinking about that especially because in our story today we're going to hear about how Jesus heals a man with a withered right hand. And I was just thinking about how sad that is that he wouldn't be able to give a high five. Um, yeah. But he might be able to do it with his left hand or um, just like today, we have to come up with different ways of doing it. He might do like an elbow bump. That'd be cool. You know, we do lots of things with our hands, right? But some people, they aren't able to use their hands at all. And that's not really the most important thing. As a matter of fact, there is an extraordinary man whose name is Nick Vujicic. And Nick was born in Australia, and he was born with no hands. As a matter of fact, he also was born with no legs. And Nick has been an amazing person that, um, that has overcome those, all kinds of adversity and inspired millions of people to be the hands and feet of Christ. In fact, he even just wrote a book a couple years ago calling it The Hands and Feet of God, Sharing the Love of God with Others. Now, I haven't read his latest book, but I do know that he talks about um, how even though he doesn't have hands or feet, uh, at one point, he was, he was really wanting to, um, to find somebody to love and, and to one day get married. He thought about how I can't even hold somebody's hand. But you know what? He realized that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that he could hold somebody's heart with his heart, and he could listen, and he could love just as much as anybody. I think he's really inspiring because um, he shows us that, that for all of us what's most important is we are the hands and feet of Christ. We, are, we represent God's love whenever we share that love with each other. So whether we can high-five or not, it's not the most important thing. We, what really matters is the love in our heart. And I know you've got that love in your heart. So you keep inspiring everybody around you with how much love you can give. And then that way, you are being the hands and feet of Christ. Alright, thanks so much for being you. And thanks for spending this time with me. Have a great day.
A reading from Luke. One Sabbath, while Jesus was going through the grain fields, his disciples plucked some heads of grain, rubbed them in their hands, and ate them. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to him, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught, and there was a man whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would cure on the Sabbath so that they might find an accusation against him. Even though he knew what they were thinking, he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come and stand here. He got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or destroy it? After looking around at all of them, He said to him, stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was restored. But they were filled with fury and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus. Now during those days, he went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose twelve of them, whom he also named apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James and John, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This week, as I've been reflecting on our lesson, for some reason, I just have been drawn to the importance of hands. It started with thinking about the offering and thinking about the man with the withered hand being asked to come and stand before Jesus. And I, was, I thought about that as our offering is coming and standing before Jesus. And, and in our offering, praying that we may be healed of all the ways that our relationships uh, may be withered um, and that, that we just need to, to know that we belong and are included. But then I just started thinking about how it shows up through this whole lesson too, right? Right? And it it starts with uh, the disciples going through a field of grain and plucking them. And and it specifically says that they um, rubbed the grain stalks between their hands and ate the grain. And then next we hear about this man with the withered hand. And then it ends with Jesus going off to pray uh, for who would be called to join him in his mission. And so I I think that there is a, a framework there for how we hear what Jesus has to teach us about the Sabbath. Now, when I've looked at uh, past sermons on the Sabbath, it was pre-pandemic, and um, 
at that time, I felt like the, the message that really needed to be um, shared was about the need to slow down, to, to not be so consumed with, with hurry sickness. Um, now, in our present world, there are, there are plenty of folks with too much time on their hands. Uh, there's just so much we can't do right now. Uh, and there's also plenty of folks who are just run ragged, that, that there's still just so much that needs to be done, and there's not enough time to do it. But I think that the, really it's important to keep in mind that the Sabbath is, is not just about whether you're busy or not, too busy or not busy enough, that, uh, that the, the two hands represents perhaps the, the purposes of, of Sabbath, of, yes, to, to rest, but, but also for renewal. And, and it's to be energized to, to do the work of God. Um, it's not just about the rest itself. And I think that's where the, the Pharisees, that they... Um, the scribes and the Pharisees, they get it wrong. Because they're only they're like the man with the withered hand. They only have one perspective that they're dealing with. And it's about you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. You're supposed to honor the Sabbath by not uh, working. That's that's one piece of it. But what Jesus is trying to see help them see is. The other piece is, is so that we may fulfill our purpose, so that we may have, be the hands of God in the world, that they extend to care for each other. It's not just to, to pause for, for pausing's sake, but it's to pause so that we can catch our breath and live with renewed purpose, to be restored to wholeness. And in fact, I, I noticed that the, uh, the word that Jesus uses when he's, the man stretches out his hands and his hand is restored, that word is used again in uh, Acts chapter 1, which is also written by Luke. And it's, um, it's as Jesus is ascending and the, the disciples are asking, is this the time when you, are, you have come to restore the kingdom? To Israel, and um, it's it's the purpose of Jesus. Clearly, is is restoration to the goodness of God's creation, and and right after that, then the the disciples are inspired to choose their replacement for Judas, so that they can be whole and restored again to the twelve. Uh, I think that connection then to our lesson today too of it ends with, that, that it's no accident that Jesus is choosing his 12 apostles right after this. It's, it's the beginning of the restoration uh, that he's come. It's the beginning of, of the renewal of the purpose of Sabbath and the purpose indeed of our lives. And so we need rest and we need renewal. We need purpose. We need both. And whether we have physically two hands or not, as I said in the children's sermon, is obviously not that important. But it is important that we, that we bring both of these things together. You know, I, I just read a story uh, this week. It's actually... Um, it was sharing a social science experiment, and I, I believe it's, it's known as the Good Samaritan Experiment. And so they, um, they went to a, a seminary, and, and they asked these seminarians who have dedicated their lives uh, to, to service to others to write a sermon on the Good Samaritan. And then... Uh, for half of them, they, they said, now, okay, now you need to go across campus and give that sermon in this building. 
And half of them, they said that uh, you have plenty of time and they'll wait for you, uh, for you to give your sermon. And the other half, they said, you know, oh my goodness, you're already late. If you hurry, you, you, can, um, you can get there and, and give your sermon. And what they did was they hired an actor to, uh, to play uh, somebody that was um, homeless and he was, he was in a doorway that was on the direct path between the classroom and, and where they were supposed to give the sermon. And as the students approached one by one, um, the, the actor would, would, uh, would be in obvious distress and need some help. And those that were told that they were already late, even though they had just been preparing a sermon on the Good Samaritan and on the importance of going out of, the, out of your way to help others, walked quickly by this man. Those that were told that they had plenty of time, they stopped and they asked if they could help. So again, uh, even if you have like good intentions and your purpose in mind, if you don't, if you don't allow yourself the, the time to breathe, the time, the space to, to recognize that um, we don't need to rush through life. We can be present in this very moment. Uh, that it's often in the detours that, that, and the distractions that we find our purpose in offering kindness and love is, is fulfilled. Um, and I, and on, the other, other, on the other hand... <laughs> that we can also have plenty of rest, but, but no purpose. And, and that even though you might obey the, the rules and the, the laws of the Sabbath, which uh, the scribes and the Pharisees would commend, you're not really honoring the gift that God is giving you. And again, I, I, so I think that this meditation on our, our hands, that they're, they're metaphors for, for, for doing the work of God, that the hand of God uh, rests upon us, the, the power of God lives within us, and we are called to work in God's kingdom, to be the hands of Christ in the world. And if we can remember that, I believe we can stretch out whatever hand of ours that may be withering within us. Either it's our, our hand that neglects the need for rest or the hand that neglects the need for purposeful work uh, for the kingdom. That we can stretch it out in the presence of Jesus and know that it is restored. And we can pluck grain to feed ourselves and go out into the world to help others as, as much as we can in small and perhaps in big ways. And we can join our hands together in prayer that we may do this together. As the, as the whole body of Christ, each one of us an important member. Jesus' healing stories are often significant on multiple levels. 
Today we hear how Jesus heals a man with a withered right hand. This is an amazing miracle. By including the detail that it was his right hand, it also illustrates another amazing miracle about the healing of his relationships too. Back then, people would shake hands with their right hand as a sign of welcome, friendship, and trust. So when Jesus healed this man's right hand, he also enabled him to re-engage in this important sign of full inclusion back into his community. When our withered relationships are healed, isn't that also a wonderful miracle to pray for and celebrate? today, we can envision presenting ourselves like the man with the withered hand. Let us pray. Glory of God, receive these gifts and the offering of our lives as we honor your commitment to rest and to be healed on this Sabbath day. Fill our hearts with compassion for all people. Let us pause to bring to mind our friends and loved ones. Help us not take them for granted. Let us pause to consider those we meet in passing. Help us not overlook their same need for love and happiness as our own. Let us pause to bring to mind those with whom we may have difficulties. Help us remove any obstacles keeping us from your healing and forgiving love. In the name of Jesus, amen. Dear Jesus, you came into a world of illness, suffering, and death, so you understand what we are going through, not only because you are divine and know all things, but also because you are human and have experienced all things. Thank you, Lord, for your compassion that covers us all and brings new hope for a better day to come. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of our government that they may set aside political partisanship and work in harmony for the common good. Help them to listen together with hearts that burn with compassion on the plight of all people. Enable them to make wise and just decisions for all who struggle in this pandemic, for the sick, for all weary health care workers, and all those who are losing jobs and businesses. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for the scientists and physicians throughout the world who are working towards treatments and vaccines. We ask that their work may bear fruit in ways that are safe, timely, and and fully available to all. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are most vulnerable during this crisis, especially for those who are in danger of being invisible, the homeless, and those that live alone. We especially offer prayers for our dear members of faith. Give your power of healing to Darlene Austin as she continues to recover at home from brain tumor surgery to Mike Smith as he continues to recover from a stroke. Give strength to Aubrey Fonnell as the doctors find ways to control the juvenile arthritis that's afflicted her body. 
and continue to be with Les Hankel and rid his bodies of infection, and also with Dad Atherton and Hal Becker as they battle with cancer. In your mercy, hear our prayer. And dear Lord, please remember our other dear friends and family who are suffering with illnesses. Be with Gary Kibista, nephew of Dar Habda, who is still in the hospital recovering from a brain injury. Bring healing to Ron Graves' brother Larry as he battles a serious heart condition, and to his brother-in-law Gary Malki as he battles complications from leukemia. Bring courage and strength to Riley Holden, husband of Dorothy Kalstrom's great-niece, so that he can continue to be in the experimental program for brain cancer, and bring hope and healing to Scott Lean's brother Chris, Jerry and Ruth Mathias' great-granddaughter Clark Ann, and Jane Hager's sister-in-law Eleanor Groby, as they too continue to fight cancers. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We also ask that you bring peace to all those who mourn the loss of loved ones during this difficult time. We ask you bring comfort and strength to Michelle Gorder and her family on the death of her sister, Debbie Bacal, last Saturday. Also hold Rose Wedlin and her family as they mourn the loss of her husband, Gary. In your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, gracious Lord, we realize this continuing crisis calls us as people of faith to stand up and be a light to this world. Help us to continue to spread messages of encouragement and hope instead of rumors or resentment and to continue to find ways to love everyone and see each one of us, even when we don't agree, as your beloved children. Amen. Jesus invites us to pray along with him. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.